I did not know to what she was referring. I do not feel that uh, there was any inappropriate action of any type. But, and this is the really important thing, it is not just my experience that matters in this. If I apologized, it was because I saw that she had been made uncomfortable and I did not want her to be uncomfortable, regardless of whether I knew why she was uncomfortable or not. This transformation of our society uh, for the better uh, needs to involve every single one of us being reflective about about our actions and about how, how they can be uh, experienced by others. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, that was Prime Minister Justin Trudeau from his interview this morning on CBC Radio's Metro Morning. As we reported earlier, the reporter at the centre of the groping allegation has issued a statement. So where does that leave things? Let's bring in the power panel. Journalist Jen Gerson is in Calgary, in Montreal. Marty Patroquin of iPolitics. And here with me in studio, Bloomberg's Josh Wingrove. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Hey there, uh, Jen, so I'm going to start with you. Uh, I imagine you, I think you were listening when I read the statement. What did you think? Um, well, firstly, I feel very sorry for the woman in question. It's very clear that she doesn't want to get thrust into the national spotlight over this and absolutely felt compelled to do so because I think the story is just blown up on her, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I feel, I feel for her. I, I think that the statement was um, perfectly reasonable uh, from every single account from both her editors, past and present, and the people who work with her. She is a highly credible person. She doesn't, she's not prone to making things up or exaggerating. Or, or manipulating anything. She obviously has nothing to gain by coming forward and doesn't wish to. So um, the allegations, even though they're sort of unspecified and undetailed, I think at this point are serious, incredible. And I don't think that Justin Trudeau's responses to date um, are adequate to the bar that he has set for himself in dealing with uh, complaints of this kind. Marty, what do you think? Do you think that's true, that, that given what we've heard about the credibility of, of what she's saying and, and her complaint, that... Mr. Trudeau has to say more or do more? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, look, I, I think uh, I think Jen's right in the sense that, uh, you know, Trudeau hasn't lived up to those lofty aspirations and all that kind of stuff. That said, the opposition sort of oppo research on this uh, for Trudeau now is it's a bit deflated because the woman said in that, in the right, that second or third paragraph said, you know, he did apologize, and I considered the matter closed, or in yeah. words similar did, to that. I can say, uh, Mr. Trudeau did, did apologize the next day. I did not pursue the incident at the time and will not be pursuing the incident further. There you go. Uh, that takes a lot of the air, that they take some of the air out of the sort of the immediate problem for Trudeau. And this, it did, it did what Trudeau wasn't able to do. It sort of puts a, 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 a period at the end of all of it. Uh, my favorite headline today, I was going to read it, sorry for the prop. Uh, I strongly deny the groping allegations that I already admitted to and apologized for, which was from the Beaverton, which is hilarious. Uh, that said, this is going to cause problems because, again, for what Jen was talking about before. And I think that. It's giving the 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 oxygen to opposition parties because she, they can't live up to that to that loss of operations, and it's not just in sexual harassment. He's done it with uh, he's done it with pipelines. He has done it with sorry I forgot the other one. Uh, done it with the pipelines. He's done it with refugees. He makes these lofty things, and he and he's never able to follow up on uh, on on meeting that. And it's and it, he's creating quite a good narrative for the uh, for the opposition coming up to the election. So what else could he actually do in this situation, Josh? I mean, I think that they are a victim a little bit of not coming out more fulsomely at the beginning. It looks now like their story has evolved, if not changed. At the start, it was, I don't remember any negative interactions, and now it's, I'm quite sure that uh, I haven't done anything wrong. And today it was, I actually don't remember or know at the time what it was that I did that she objected to. I think those are... Three different answers to me. Those, look, those all look a little different. So uh, the Prime Minister looks to be um, sort of opening his memory a little bit more on the fly on this. And so I think we'll see going forward, you know, does it hit him? Remember, this is a government that relies heavily on the support of women. There's a huge gender split. We all know this in, in federal politics in Canada. If it sticks that he looks like a hypocrite on women's issues because of this incident, and that could be very politically damaging. That said, you know, I, where does it go from here? It seems that this woman's wish, frankly, is that we stop talking about it. Talking she about she it. certainly doesn't want to be asked about it. That's mm -hmm. been clear from the beginning. Um, we still don't know, obviously, what the incident is. Her statement today does, does, not, not, uh, does not clarify that. Um, so that, there'll be a lot of questions around that. Um, and I don't know yet to the extent to which either of the other two major parties are going to be keen to use this as a wedge issue. I, it's a dicey one. It's a dicey one. Jen, how difficult does this become for the Prime Minister if there is a potential 
you know, future Darshan Kank, Kent Hare, some, some kind of complaint that he has dealt with in the past, uh, if that comes, to, comes about again, how, how much harder does it, does it make that situation for the well, party? Well, I, I, I mean, I think the type of allegations, and because we don't know the specifics of these allegations, um, the, to be perfectly frank, I mean, if Justin Trudeau uh, allegedly groped somebody while drunk at a music festival in inner city, or sorry, in, in, in the interior, you know, 18 years ago, a couple of years ago, that would not be any kind of career-ending scandal. I mean, that that is that we we would have chalked that one up to, hey, buddy, you shouldn't have done that. That was bad behavior. But you know, then people I think would have moved on. The, the problem here is that Jester Doe has been so adamant with everybody else in his caucus that if any complaint of anything comes forward, that that complaint has to be investigated. That we have to take it so utterly seriously that it can't be, just be dismissed with a claim of non of, of amnesia and, and a wave a wave of the hand you know when you set that bar up that's a bar you now have to meet for yourself so the allegations yeah. themselves aren't that bad it's it's the hypocrisy and it's the branding it's the image problem that he has now and if another allegation were to come forward of this nature if we were to see that there was you know a s series of bad behavior that this wasn't just some one off you know mistake at, at, at a drunken music festival um, this would be very 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 bad for Trudeau and I think it would seriously imperil potentially seriously imperil his career I think the one quick thing here is that it's we don't necessarily have there's, a fresh allegation. There's no, and there's no right? complainant. There's no complainant willing in, to participate in this, which is and, often and, 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 a case, as we know in these cases, right? And that makes it difficult to have policies to deal with it. I think that, I think that we'd be having an extremely different conversation if this woman decided that wanted, wanted that she participate. I think that there is every reason in the world that she does not want to do that. Clearly, and, and that's um, that. That's exactly it, right there, Josh. Is is that? I think it's even more than that. I think the fact is is that in this letter. I don't want to say it abdicates Trudeau completely, but the fact is, is she seems to be very, uh, she seems to be satisfied with the apology she received. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but from the way that I read it, she doesn't abdicate she's, Trudeau at all. She's sticking to her story. She's saying something bad happened here. She doesn't, I just, she doesn't I don't, sound what, what I'm she saying, what I'm saying as, as far as a PR disaster thing is concerned, this, it's better now that Trudeau has this letter in hand than it was before, because because now you have the woman saying, yes, he apologized, and I don't want to go with this any any further. We didn't know that before, and I think that's. I, I, I think that I plays I, in, I in Trudeau's I don't, advantage. I don't. I don't think her. She's come forward now. She's chosen to put her name to a statement now, and she's sticking by her side of the story. I don't see how that's a good thing for Trudeau. But because I think she, I think maybe it, what Marty's saying is when she says that Mr. Trudeau apologized the next day, I didn't pursue it at the time and will not be pursuing it further. So yeah, but did. That's but what but I'm again, we get back to the question about apologize for doing nothing wrong. Apologize for doing nothing wrong, and like nobody, he's not also not not. Nobody seems to be um, uh, undermining the, the quote that she gave in that editorial at the time, which said something to the effect of, I wouldn't have been so forward if I had known you'd been reporting for a national outlet. Like, what? Like, yeah. apologize for that? I mean, was, was that the apology? Trudeau's I mean, that, comments that's today would not be the, something that has been explained. Yeah, because, I, I agree. Because I just, he, his, you know, for those that are having trouble keeping track with this at home, it's evolving quickly. His story is essentially that he apologized just because she was upset without knowing what Why specifically upset. upset her. That is the claim that the Prime Minister is making to square that. Yeah, and Marty, what do you think? Uh, again, every, every uh, pass is prologue and everything that Trudeau has come up with right so far, and I, I will gladly admit that everything that Trudeau has been done is, has been done on the fly, has been done uh, you know, off the cuff, doesn't really know how to, how to do any of this. This is the first time that we're actually seeing, a uh, seeing in the story that this woman is satisfied with the apology and would like this all to go away. And it says it black and white. I and don't I argue, see in that statement I, 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 that she's argue, satisfied with the apology. I argue, I, I, I argue I, that's I, a That's PR not what the statement says. For, Sorry. For, uh, the, the statement does not say I was satisfied with the apology. The statement said, said is that I chose not to continue to pursue it after the apology. That's, those are two very different statements.